The nation's largest bank, the Commonwealth, today launched an extraordinary attack on Apple, claiming its Apple Pay mobile service is anti-competitive and now dominates transactions made with a mobile phone. Joining me is our business editor, Ross Greenwood. What's at the heart of the complaint, Ross? OK, so at the very heart of this complaint, Kieran, is the fact that most of us historically have paid with that. We've paid with our cards, uh, but increasingly more and more people are paying with that, paying with their phone. Now, the issue of paying with that means that in many cases, the boss of the Commonwealth Bank, Matt Common, claims that Apple won't allow banks and third parties onto their system. And as a result of that, there is no competition to Apple. Apple is a giant company. Um, he says it's not an Australian company. And so as a result, there's a real payment. So today he's given evidence to a joint parliamentary committee looking at mobile payments and the future of them. Here's just a little of what he had to say. The thought that a, a single provider could have 80% market share in an individual market is usually cause for concern. And this is a company, and they look, I'd be the first to say they make fantastic products, but th this is a company that's market cap is double Australia's gross domestic product. Uh, and I'd say certainly in the context of tax receipts, makes very little contribution to uh, Australian government receipts. You get a sense there there was also a barb about the amount of tax that Apple pays in Australia and as well also highlighting the strength of Apple even compared with the overall Australian economy. So the ACCC, the Competition Authority, was also giving evidence to this parliamentary inquiry today. Marcus Bezzi uh, is in charge of this area. Here's just a little of what he had to say. In the digital economy area, one of the concerns that's been expressed internationally around these sorts of issues is self-preferencing by the big digital companies. So if they are operating in a market and giving themselves an advantage or discriminating against people they're competing against, that can have a very serious effect on competition. And Ross, though the construction industry is shut down for now, in New South Wales. Today, today there's been evidence of just how strong the boom has been over the past year. It really has. And, and the, the, the sort of, if you like, the, the litmus test here is Blue Scope Steel. Um, when steel companies in Australia are doing well, and it's our major steel producer, um, you really do know that the whole economy is growing. Now, this comes off the back of not just um, the inordinate amount of building that's going on in terms of infrastructure, but also the amount of home renovation and new home building that's taken place as a result of very low interest rates. So today, Blue Scope Steel has indicated that its profits uh, are going to soar when it does eventually release its profit report during August because remember from the 1st of August it becomes profit reporting season for the next uh, uh, month uh, and certainly you'd have to say that uh, the, the profit that Blue Scope is going to record here is going to be pretty significant. It says it's coming not just from uh, if you like uh, steel production, steel manufacturing which is going into industry but also then say for example um, you've got all of its business in terms of its building products that it makes itself that are also flying. So it really is every aspect of the company that's going well at the moment. Finally, inflation numbers are out tomorrow, Ross. Now, normally we'd be all over these figures looking for signs of inflation, giving a hint about possible RBA moves, but even before they're out, these numbers are out of date. Well, they, they are. If you consider now lockdowns, um, it doesn't matter really what these numbers come in, and it's suggested that these numbers might be the highest inflation Australia's recorded in more than 10 years. So, as you point out, we'd normally be going, well, what is the Reserve Bank's response to that? Is it going to look through this? Is it going to change its policy or whatever it might do? Reserve Bank, we now know with the lockdowns and with potentially Australia already in recession, but certainly in this quarter, um, economic growth has been hammered as a result of those lockdowns. The Reserve Bank will do nothing. So so when we see these numbers um, tomorrow, which come up to the end of June 30, the June quarter, as it were, you're going to see the June quarter inflation, according to analysts, coming around 0.7 of a percent. But the annual inflation comes in at 3.7 percent. That's going to be the absolute key here. So, as I say, the Reserve Bank will do nothing. These numbers are, you know, as I say, they're not necessarily irrelevant, but they do certainly show there is inflation in Australia's economy. Uh, but, as I say, the Reserve Bank will do nothing while these lockdowns are on. Uh, this is for another day, I would have to say, Kieran.